Let's now see how to find the area of a parametrized surface. So remember, a parametrized surface has a domain in the UV plane, which is mapped by function r to the surface in x, y, z space. Okay. Now the idea for calculating the area is to divide the domain up into tiny rectangles. I won't draw them all, I'll just draw a few. Um, is so we divide the domain up into tiny rectangles and then look at their images in the surface and add up the areas of those. Now, if you take a really small rectangle of size, let's say it's um, its horizontal width is delta u and its horizontal height is delta v, then what it gets mapped to by r is approximately the parallelogram, at least if we assume that this map is differentiable. Then what we get is approximately a parallelogram. And what are the edge vectors of this parallelogram? Well, one edge vector comes from uh, the horizontal side here. So we're moving in the u direction by delta u. And then the amount that we move in the image is the partial derivative of r with respect to u times delta u. So this is delta u times the vector ru. And the other side is delta v times the vector rv. And the area of the parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product of its two sides. So it's delta v or delta u ru cross delta v rv. And I can pull out the delta u and the delta v and write this as um, ru cross rv times delta u delta v. And then the area of the surface is the limit as the size of these rectangles go to zero of the sum over the rectangles of the area, or sorry, these are not rectangles. Well, you sum over rectangles, but you sum over area of the parallelogram. And the area of the parallelogram, as we've just seen, is the magnitude of RU cross RV times delta U delta V. And then in the limit, when you sum up something, some function times delta U delta V, you get the double integral. So you get the double integral over what? Over the domain D on which our surface is defined. So you get the double integral over D of the length of the vector RU cross RV dA. Right, so this is the formula for the area of a parametrized surface. So let's do examples. So first let's consider S to be the unit sphere. So we've seen that we can parametrize this as x equals sine u cosine v, y equals sine u sine v, and z equals cosine u, where u goes from 0 to pi. This corresponds to the coordinate phi in spherical coordinates, and v goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, And then the area of s is the integral over the domain. So the domain is where um, u goes from 0 to pi and v goes from 0 to 2 pi. 
So you can say integral from 0 to pi of integral from 0 to 2 pi. Then I have ru cross rv dv du. Okay, so we have to calculate ru cross rv. So ru, so we, we differentiate these equations with respect to u and v. So ru is cosine u cosine v, that's the derivative of x with respect to u. Then the derivative of y with respect to u is cosine u sine v. And the derivative of z with respect to u is minus sine u. While rv is, so differentiating this, I get minus sine u sine v. Differentiating y, I get sine u cosine v. And differentiating z, I get 0. And then what's the cross product? So the first term is this times 0 minus this times this. So I get sine squared u cosine v. The second term, I have this times this, which is sine squared u sine v um, minus this, which is 0. And for the third term, I have this times this minus that times that. So I have um, cosine u times sine u times cosine squared v. Then I have plus cosine u sine u plus sine squared v. So I just get um, uh, sine u times cosine u. Now we can simplify this a little bit by noticing that sine u factors out. So this is sine u times sine u cosine v comma sine u sine v comma cosine u. And we can further notice that this vector here is now just the vector x, y, z. Okay, so the length of this vector, well, x, y, z is a unit vector because we're on the unit sphere. So the length of this vector is just the absolute value of sine u. And furthermore, since u is between 0 and pi, sine u is positive, so I don't even need an absolute value sign. So this is the integral from 0 to pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi, of sine u dv du. All right, and then doing the integral over v, I just multiply by 2 pi. So I get 2 pi integral from 0 to pi of sine u du. So this is 2 pi times minus cosine u, evaluated at u equals pi and u equals 0. So this is 2 pi times minus minus 1 um, minus minus 1. Um, which is 4 pi, which is what we're supposed to get. All right, one more example. So let's say s is the graph of z equals f of x, y, where f is defined on a domain d. So d is, this is a domain in R2. Right, so how are we going to parameterize a graph? Well, this is sort of a particularly simple example of a parameterized surface. So the parameterization, so I can take x to equal u and y to equal v, and then z is, is f of x, y, but I want it in terms of u and v. So z is f of u, v, and, and u and v are in the domain d. Okay, so I should draw a picture. Here's our domain d. And over it, we have this graph, s. This is z equals f of x, y. OK, so now, what are ru and rv? So ru is 1, comma, 0, comma, um, fu. 
um, which I could also write as fx, because u and x are the same thing here. And rv is um, 0, comma 1, comma fy. So the area is the double integral over d of magnitude of ru cross rv. And we did this calculation before, but we can do it again here. So ru cross rv So the first component is minus fx, the second component is minus fy, and the third component is 1. So its magnitude is the square root of 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared. So this, this agrees with the formula that we got before. And our formula for the area of a general parametrized surface is a generalization of this to surfaces which are not necessarily graphs. As long as you can parameterize them, you can still calculate their areas.